Hey folks, it's Mangrel. Welcome back to the channel. I'm checking out this Beta FPV Pavo 20 Whoop. It's a two inch or 90 millimeter Whoop. It's supposed to weigh about 150 grams. It supports the O3 from DJI, plus it supports the Vista or equivalent. It's supposed to give you five minutes of flight time with the recommended battery. And it comes all packaged like this, ready to go. Just install your video transmitter. Thank you Beta FPV for sending me this for review. They also sent me a replacement whoop frame because they know how I fly. And here's a closer look at the frame kit. I just realized it's a different color. This is transparent gray, whereas the other one is black. And the ducts are nice and flexible, so hopefully they survive multiple crashes. They also sent me these LED strips, a blue one and a red one. Finally, they sent me the recommended battery. This is a 3S 450 milliamp battery. It looks like there are two in there. And the batteries are rated at 75C. Oh, they are high voltage cells. And they've got a XT30, which is perfect. For the unboxing, this is what you see when you take the top of the box off. We've got some screws and it looks like we've got some linear antenna. Here's a closer look at the antennas that they've included, along with the assortment of screws that you get. We've got more light strips. Then we've got some extra props, which is great because that's the first thing we're probably gonna break. And then it looks like the USB port is not on the quad itself. And I've seen this with other all-in-ones. So the SpeedyB all-in-one, the same thing. You have to actually connect a little daughter board like this to the flight controller before you can connect it to your computer. Not ideal, but that's fine. Next, we have the top of the frame. This is just regular plastic, but the good thing is it seems like it's very flexible. Looking at the quad, it's pretty much assembled and ready to go. It does come in different receiver protocols. I've got the Express LRS 2.4 gigahertz. You can see the antenna right there, which I don't know how I feel about that. It looks like it would be susceptible to damage. The motors are Beta FPV branded motors, 1103 8500 KV. We've got our connector right here for our air unit. So that should be pretty plug and play. And then we've got our all-in-one board at the bottom over there. The other thing I've noticed is that the motor wires are not soldered directly to the all-in-one flex controller. They have a connector. Of course, that adds a bit of weight, but it does make maintainability a lot easier. Here's where you connect that daughter board so you can get the USB connector. It's very easily accessible. You just have to push these power leads down and you can just connect it over here. So that is very, very easy to do. And then this connector at the bottom is for your LED strips. So if you want to use the LED strips, you will be connecting it down here. The weight of just the frame with the electronics, 51 grams as advertised. I'm building this with my Naked O3, which is an O3 that has no case. And I don't know if I recommend that because as you can see, there are no screws holding that O3 in. It's held in by hopes and dreams. So chance of ejection is quite high but this will save us about 15 grams. I'll give you a link in the video description to how you can do this with your O3. And we're all installed. It wasn't too difficult to install. All you have to do is put in these rubber grommets, very similar to, to the grommets we use on our flight controller. And then you pass a screw from the underside into this top deck here. We can see the O3 is not the most secure, but I don't think it's gonna go anywhere, especially because I've used a button head screw here. And that screw actually works as a bit of an anchor to prevent it from moving more than this. I did also use the included linear antenna. I'll give these a try, but note that this does support the O3 antenna through the middle hole here. I've got the cable connected. I routed the camera cable over here, just twisted it up so that it's out of the way. The LED strip was too cool to leave off. So I did go ahead and install it around the perimeter. So I passed the cable through there. I wrapped it all the way around and actually the piece it came with was too long. So I just gave it a little snip snip over here. Let's do our first power on one, two, three, please don't explode. All right, that sounded good. Oh, my eyes. Final weight check, 83 grams, add battery, 121. That is not too shabby. Now that we're all assembled, let's go ahead and bind the Express LRS receiver that's on board here to our transmitter. And for this, I have to refer to the manual. So what the manual says to do is to take your battery and turn this thing off and on very quickly three times. So let's go one, two, three. Green LED flashing there, if you can see it. 
That means it's now in bind mode. So now I've got my transmitter. All I gotta do is go to my express LRS and I should be able to go under bind and now it should bind. Yep, there we go. And as soon as we bound, I can see the LED turned off. I'm guessing the LEDs on a button. Let me hold this down. Which button is it on? Not that one. Is it this one? And the reason why I'm holding it down because I don't know which is the arm, the arm switch. So this is normally my arm switch. Okay, so right now I have to remap the buttons because this one turns the light on and off. Now that we're at the computer and we want to use the Betaflight configurator, we have to attach that little daughter board to the drone. That's that little tiny board that allows us to then have a USB port. I've connected the USB cable to the computer and everything powered on, which is great. Not all AIO, all-in-one flight controls behave this way. Some of them require a battery to be plugged in as well. This one, is that's not the case. You plug the cable to your computer and everything powers on except for your video transmitter. The receiver has powered on, the flight controller has powered on, which honestly is great behavior to see from beta FPV. I've opened up the beta flight configurator and I can see it has already detected communication port four. I wanna do connect. First thing I see is firmware 4.4.1. It's a little bit of an older version of Betaflight. Not too old, but would have been nicer to have something a little bit more recent. We will update this later. Now, if I pick up the quad and I wanna make sure if it's going in the right direction. So I'm going left and right, that's correct. Forward and backwards, correct. Twisty, twisty, everything looks good. So, so far, basic configuration is accurate. Now I'm gonna to go to port. Let's see what they've done here. We can see everything is set up actually quite good. We have MSP display port turned on, which is great because that means we can get the canvas mode and we can get our on-screen display showing in the goggles. So I'm not gonna be touching anything here. This looks fine. Configuration, 8K, 4K, accelerometer, Pavo 20. This is all fine. Battery, so good. I see they have set these calibrations. Uh, pit tuning, let's see what they've done here. Okay, so they've done some sort of tuning already. Uh, let's see, rates. Oh, this thing's going very twisty twisty for some reason. So the rates look fine, 670. Okay, receiver. So receiver. Oh, this is, this is a li little bit messed up. So we wanna flip this around. Is this one? Safe. There we go. Now we are good. Modes. Okay, what do I want to do? I want this not to be, I want this to be my arm. So this is auxiliary four. So I want auxiliary four to be my arm. Okay. So I mean, you'll, you're just going to come here and you're going to modify this based on your personal preference. Let's go to the motors. Motors, oh, we got bi-directional D-Shot, very good. And then OSD, we can fine tune this based on what we want. I took the Pablo 20 out to my usual flying area on a very calm day just to see how it would perform outdoors. What you're looking at here is the raw footage directly out of the O3 onboard recording or the goggles recording. There is no stabilization on this. So if there is any weird jitters or any kind of weird flight characteristics or shakes, they will turn up on this video here. You can definitely get smoother video if you use one of those stabilization software so that's such as Gyroflow, but I want you to get a feel for how this thing flies on a calm day outdoors. I was comfortable enough to even do a couple of freestyle maneuvers didn't handle the best in freestyle, which I don't expect it to. This is not a freestyle quad. This is more for flying around on a calm day like this, getting some nice cinematic footage, and also not really disturbing anyone else at the park. It is fairly quiet in comparison to some of the larger drones. I was even comfortable here to fly around this uh, playground, go behind the trees. I never had any issues with signal strength given those linear antennas and also no problems with the tiny Express LRS uh, wire antenna that's on this either.
On the second day, I went out on a more windy day and you saw that wind sock on the right hand side really fighting for, for dear life. So definitely a lot more of a windy day and it's, you felt it as you flew around. So the quad definitely a lot more shaky and it required a lot more inputs to keep it on track. It's a 120 gram quad, so you, you can't expect it to be as stable as something heavier, especially over here as I'm flying around these trees, you can see how much shaking up and down kind of bobbing the quad has. I do slow down here a little bit so you can see just how much wind there is given the movement in, in the leaves and the trees. It's not the most windy day, but definitely a lot more gusty than the first day I was out. It's still handled just fine. I'm sure you can work out some of these bobs and, and shakes using Gyroflow or other stabilizing software, but at this point, it was a little bit out of its elements and you definitely felt it when you were flying around. On this day, I got about three and a half minutes. Even at the three minute mark, it had plenty of power to do loops and some very simple freestyle maneuvers, but I did get roughly three minutes and a half. And that seems to be the average I got from most of my flights, whether indoor or outdoors. I've now spent over a month with the Pavo 20 and in that month I've done numerous flights outdoors and many flights indoors and in that one month I haven't burnt out anything and I haven't broken anything and that even includes connecting the battery in backwards one time which is something you never want to do but this did survive that. At $104 US, yes you heard right, $104 US, this thing is incredible value and it's great for those looking for a small quad for indoor flight or close proximity at the local park or if you are a beginner. Now if I start to nitpick and again remember $104 US, I would have loved to have a more recent version of Betaflight along with better configuration. The pit tuning was adequate. I did find that receiver issue where the quad was just turning and turning and turning until we fixed the channel mapping. I would have loved to see better configuration in those areas. And with the ducts being so flexible, you do go through props very, very quickly. They have included four extra props. You will want to get additional props there. I did notice that the front of the camera mount here is a little bit tight. So if you are going to be running an ND filter like I am here, you need one of the vertical ones versus one of the horizontal ones. There just isn't enough space to fit a horizontal ND filter there. And finally, I found that this is one of the quieter tiny whips I've flown. I've flown other 90 millimeter whips that are definitely a lot louder. So that was a welcome change. Oh my God, it's so dark here. Boom, light on. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and stay tuned for more videos.